Read for you by Chiquito Crasto. Captain Murderer by Charles Dickens. If we all knew our own minds in a more enlarged sense than the popular acceptation of that phrase, I suspect we should find our nurses responsible for most of the dark corners we are forced to go back to against our wills. The first diabolical character who intruded himself on my peaceful youth was a certain Captain Murderer. This wretch must have been an offshoot of the Bluebeard family. But I had no suspicion of the consanguinity in those times. His warning name would seem to have awakened no general prejudice against him, for he was admitted into the best society and possessed immense wealth. Captain Murderer's mission was matrimony, and the gratification of a cannibal appetite with tender brides. On his marriage morning, he caused both sides of the way to church to be planted with curious flowers, and when his bride said, Dear Captain Murderer, I never saw flowers like these before. What are they called? He answered, They are called garnish for house lamb, and laughing at his ferocious practical joke in a horrid manner, disquieting the minds of the noble bridal company with a very sharp show of teeth, then displayed for the first time. He made love in a coach and six, and married in a coach and twelve, and all his horses were milk-white horses, with one red spot on the back, which he caused to be hidden by the harness. For the spot would come there, even though every horse was milk-white when Captain Murderer bought him, and the spot was young bride's blood. To this terrific point I am indebted for my personal experience of a shudder and cold beads on the forehead. When Captain Murderer had made an end of feasting and revelry, and had dismissed the noble guests and was alone with his wife on the day month after their marriage, it was his whimsical custom to produce a golden rolling pin and a silver pie boat. Now, there was this special feature in the captain's courtships that he always asked if the young lady could make pie-crust, and if she couldn't, by nature or education, she was taught. Well, when the bride saw Captain Murderer produce the golden rolling-pin and silver pie-board, she remembered this, and turned up her laced silk sleeves to make a pie. The captain brought out a silver pie-dish of immense capacity, and the captain brought out flour and butter and eggs, and all things needful, except the inside of the pie, of materials for the staple of the pie itself, the captain brought out none. Then said the lovely bride, Dear Captain Murderer, what pie is this to be? He replied, A meat pie. Then said the lovely bride, Dear Captain Murderer, I see no meat. The captain humorously retorted, Look in the glass. She looked in the glass, but still she saw no meat and then the captain roared with laughter, and suddenly frowning and drawing his sword, bade her roll out the crust. So she rolled out the crust, dropping large tears upon it all the time, because he was so cross. And when she had lined the dish with crust, and had cut the crust all ready to fit the top, the captain called out, I see meat in the glass. And the bride looked up at the glass, just in time to see the captain cutting her head off. And he chopped her in pieces, and peppered her, and salted her, and put her in the pie, and sent it to the bakers, and ate it all, and picked the bones. Captain Murderer went on this way, prospering exceedingly, until he came to choose a bride from two twin sisters, and at first didn't know which to choose. For though one was fair and the other dark, they were both equally beautiful. But the fair twin loved him, and the dark twin hated him, so he chose the fair one. The dark twin would have prevented the marriage if she could, but she couldn't. However, on the night before it, much suspecting Captain Murderer, she stole out and climbed his garden wall, and looked in at his window through a chink in the shutter, and saw him having his teeth filed sharp. Next day she listened all day, and heard him make his joke about the house lamb. And that day month he had the paste rolled out, and cut the fair twin's head off, and chopped her in pieces and peppered her, and salted her, and put her in the pie, and sent it to the bakers, and ate it all, 
and pick the bones. Now the dark twin had had her suspicions, much increased by the filing of the captain's teeth, and again by the house lamb joke. Putting all things together, when he gave out that her sister was dead, she divined the truth and determined to be revenged. So she went up to Captain Murderer's house and knocked at the knocker and pulled at the bell, and when the captain came to the door said, Dear Captain Murderer, marry me next, for I always loved you and was jealous of my sister. The captain took it as a compliment and made a polite answer, and the marriage was quickly arranged. On the night before it, the bride again climbed to his window and again saw him having his teeth filed sharp. At this sight she laughed such a terrible laugh at the chink in the shutter that the captain's blood curdled, and he said, I hope nothing has disagreed with me. At that she laughed again, a still more terrible laugh, and the shutter was opened and search made, but she was nimbly gone, and there was no one. Next day they went to church in a coach, and twelve, and were married. And that day month she rolled the pie crust out, and Captain Murderer cut her head off, and chopped her in pieces, and peppered her, and salted her, and put her in the pie, and sent it to the baker's, and ate it all and picked the bones. But before she began to roll out the paste, she had taken a deadly poison of a most awful character, distilled from toad's eyes and spider's knees, and Captain Murderer had hardly picked the last bone, when he began to swell, and to turn blue, and to be all over spots, and to scream. And he went on swelling and turning bluer, and being more all over spots, and screaming, until he reached from floor to ceiling and from wall to wall, and then, at one o'clock in the morning, he blew up with a loud explosion. At the sound of it, all the milk-white horses in the stables broke their halters and went mad, and then they galloped over everybody in Captain Murderer's house, beginning with the family blacksmith who had filed his teeth, until the whole were dead, and then they galloped away. End of Captain Murderer by Charles Dickens Read for you by Chiquito Crasto, Birmingham, Alabama